thank you, thank you. Um, whew, there we go. Oh, wow. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be on this stage this morning. Um, I'll probably move a little bit. I'm not one to stand uh, very still. Um, if you know me, I'm like all the time. Um, sometimes I wish I could fly and I could just flap my arms because I feel like I'm like constantly in motion. Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to fly today. Um, although that would be pretty cool. Grand entrance from the top. Um, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be on this stage. Um, I've been in RD here for seven years. For those of you who I have not met face to face, I'm Ebeth. Um, my staff, you know, in the front row. Um, live in Wilson and Lewis. I have a really cute dog. You can come visit me. Her name is Lena. Um, yeah, I love her. Today, um, I am choosing to speak about knowing the voice of the shepherd. And particularly, um, wanting to focus in on this is because we, we just sang songs um, like, you will be my God always. I will worship you always. And yet, God is the first voice we usually push out when we're stressed, when we're tired, when we have so much going on. The Lord's voice is what we drown out most. And, and I think we, we make excuses for that often. Um, and I'm, I am guilty of that right away. Um, I'll fill my, my time with sports. I'll fill my time with all of these other things um, that keep me from zeroing in on the voice of the Lord. Um, the second reason why I want to talk about this in particular, oh, come on. Um, the second reason I want to talk about this in particular is, um, is that knowing the voice of the Lord is something that we toss around a lot. In a Christian setting, let's just listen to the voice of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I've, I, no one's ever set me down and said, this is how you listen to the voice of the Lord. And we make a lot of assumptions about what that means, what the Lord is calling us to. And it's like, well, if you just listen, or if you just pray harder, or if you just lift your hands and worship, the Lord will speak. Um, in reality, though, um, if we're not actually taught how to listen to the Lord, or we don't know and recognize his voice, how can we expect you all to do that? So um, I'm going to talk about this in a couple of different ways. Um, the reason, too, um, is, is if, we, if we think about the voices that are surrounding us, the voices that we recognize right away. Some of the voices that I recognize pretty readily is Morgan Freeman right? He has this epic voice, this epic voice. Um, I don't, I, for me, it sounds very divine-like when he speaks and it echoes through. Um, and I can recognize his voice without even seeing him on the screen. Another one I can recognize pretty easily is Taylor Swift. You know, Shake It comes on, I'm like, oh yeah, you don't even need to, to know. You. She's got a very unique, distinct voice. Um, another voice that I recognized growing up, but many of you might not, I would hope so, is Billy Graham. You know, in the evangelical world, he is a phenomenal speaker, and people would recognize his voice internationally because he had this prolific way um, of teaching. And um, a lot of times we, we recognize people's voices that we spend time with or that we watch often or that we're around. Um, and I think that that's probably one of the key ways of getting to know the Lord. So I'm going to talk about knowing the voice of the shepherd in particularly um, because Jesus is our good shepherd. So if you have your Bible or you can, your pew Bible or you can just listen, we're going to turn to John chapter 10. Um, I think it's very fitting. Um, this semester, we've been studying Jesus' life through, um, through the book of John. Um, and, and coming to what I wanted to speak about today, John 10, and thinking about the Lord's voice um, in a shepherd context, really stuck out to me. So I'm going to read this aloud for, for you all. John chapter 10, starting in verse 2. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his, sheep, his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out, all, all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. This is the word of the Lord. Um, a couple of points I want to make um, to start with. Um, and then I'm going to get into this knowing of the voice. Because I think that there's a couple of things that we need to acknowledge before we actually dive into what does the voice of the Lord sound like. Um, and that is the character of the shepherd. The shepherd calls his own sheep by name. Jesus calls us by name. 
He knows us intimately. He knows those sheep that are his. Um, if you think about a sheep fold, um, I've never really seen one in person, so I don't actually know this, but I've read about it in my thinking about how cool shepherds are, um, is, is that many, um, many shepherds would take their sheep into one flock. And for a shepherd to know their own sheep, I think it's a pretty cool thing. Um, and not only do they know their own sheep within a fold, is they literally lay at the gate protecting protecting them because they know and they care about their own. And I think that that speaks to the character of God. God knows us. He wants to know us. He wants to get to know. Um, the sheep are not anonymous to him. He's not up here walking ahead so far that he doesn't have an eye on what's going on. And, and that's what, what Jesus does for us even now is he walks intimately with us, regardless of if we feel him or not. We, he might feel very distant, but he's, he's right there and he's calling us by name. And I think um, to, know, to know Jesus is to know his character, and to know his voice is to understand the character of the shepherd. The other thing um, that I think is this, this leading, this leading of sorts, that the shepherd goes ahead. The shepherd doesn't come behind and say, okay, sheep, where do you want to go? But the shepherd takes the step in front. And he, he does that because how else are the shepherd, or how else are the sheep going to know where they're going? The shepherd goes in front and he leads them, much like this painting. I love this painting, um, and I think it depicts this, this sense of following that I think is really beautiful. Um, and and this, is, this is painted um, based off of um, Psalm 23. Um, I'm also going to read that for you because I think it's, it's really imperative to understanding the character of, of the shepherd. Um, you can also turn there if you'd like, but no pressure. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, but they comfort me. Sheep recognize um, the shepherd's voice, but they also recognize what the shepherd is carrying. And the, the rod of sorts is a, is a comfort to them because it's familiar. Um, it's what they know. Um, I, uh, I've often struggled with, with, this, um, with this psalm, actually, um, because I often don't trust that the Lord is going to lead me to still waters. I don't often trust that the Lord wants to refresh my soul because when I'm carrying the weight of everyone else's burdens, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like the Lord is leading me to, um, to restore my soul, but rather he's leading me to carry the weight. And let me tell you, friends, that's not true. That is not what the Lord has for you. <laughs> Many burdens are represented in this space. As an RD, we get the privilege of walking alongside students in all capacities of life. Um, wow, Whew, I was not expecting to tear up. Whew. There, it's, I turned 31 this year and I really blame it on turning 31. Um, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> all the time. Um, and I, I think, um, I don't trust the Lord to lead me down still waters. It's because I think I can do it on my own. I think I'm gonna be able to get to that stream where I'm gonna be refreshed on my own. And that is just not how the Christian life works. And that's not how we're meant to be. It's not what we were created to do. We were created to dwell with our Lord. Um, and when I was in college, um, I, I suffered actually many illnesses, and I won't get into all of them. But one in particular has, uh, has struck me for pretty much for the rest of my life. Um, I have chronic mono, so that means anytime I stay up like really late, or I don't get enough sleep, or those sorts of things. Like my, my physical body literally shuts down. Um, like my liver swells and it's awful. Um, it's awful and it's all because I did not trust the Lord to provide. And um, I, look back, I look back and see how the Lord is making good in that and how he does lead me as, um, as a sheep, as, his, as he, as a shepherd, to still waters um, as these physical reminders. And, a lot of that, that is not trusting that the Lord wants to provide me rest. 
Um, in college, it's really easy, really easy to get caught up in this schedule where I have to do, I have to perform, I have to achieve, I have to be social, I have to be healthy, but I, but forget about being healthy if that means I can spend five more minutes with my friend or if I can participate in one more thing or if I can lead one more thing as if it is our responsibility to save the world. Friends, that's also not your responsibility. Jesus already did that. And um, I, think, I think as we think about the Lord leading us um, and really trusting that, is trusting that he wants to take us beside quiet waters. And that path to quiet waters might not be easy, but he's leading us there. And I think that this picture reminds me of that, um, is the sheep can't really see, especially the ones in the back, can't really see where they're going, but they're trusting the shepherds leading them. My friends, I ask, you, I ask you this question. Do you trust that the Spirit is leading you? Do you trust that Jesus, that as the Good Shepherd, is leading you to good places, that he wants good for your life? Um, and I think that that's part of his character, is knowing that and trusting that. <laughs> now we get to get to the fun part um, for me, is the sheep know his voice. Um, I think in the, they, the scripture um, part talks talks about the sheep knowing his voice before it talks about him, uh, the shepherd leading. Um, and I, I find that very in intriguing as I think about it because um, to, know, to know the voice means to follow. Um, how do you distinguish the voice of God amongst the voice of other things? For me, um, I've, I've often struggled about with this because I've always wanted God just to speak audibly, loud and clear, big picture, my daughter, I love you. Um, and, and in reality, I often don't, I don't hear the voice of the Lord in that way. Some, some in this room probably do. That's awesome. Praise be to God. Um, but I'm not one who feels like the Lord speaks audibly to me, although sometimes I just feel like I need that. Um, but instead, instead, he, he speaks to me in a manner that um, maybe through music or through reading his word. Um, how, how, do you, how are you distinguishing the voice of the Lord, the voice of the shepherd amongst everything else that's fighting for our attention? On any given day, any given day, I'll wake up and I'm going to take the dog for a walk, fix myself breakfast, get a cup of coffee. I almost always have to have coffee. I'm actually surprised I don't have my cup with me now. Um, and, and don't actually sit down and read my Bible first thing in the morning. Um, I usually turn on music and take a shower because because I'm an extreme extrovert. I have to like take 10 years to wake up. And um, in, in, that, in that time though, I'm already distracted by the 15 emails that I need to answer by 10 a.m., the, um, the list of readings that I haven't done for my class, the 10 meetings that I still have to set up because I don't feel like I ever have time. And the, filling my life with the word of God is not what comes first to me. And I'm deeply saddened by that and have been really convicted, actually, as I think and prepare for this. Um, because it makes me associate my life with Christ with busyness. And that, that's not what the, what the shepherd is calling us to. Um, what are you associating the voice of God with right now? Maybe it's a problem, maybe it's distance, maybe it's a significant other, maybe it's your pile of homework um, that is waiting for you. Maybe it's the fact that you are, are still rather far behind in your Christian life and worship credit, and so to be in this place feels like a mandatory thing instead of a privilege that we get to gather in a safe space and worship. Um, maybe you're associating Jesus with pain. Maybe you're associating the voice of God with doing something that he's calling you to that you don't want to do. Maybe you're associating the voice of God with not being enough, not being holy enough, not being spiritual enough, all these labels that we place on ourselves as if we have to achieve a relationship with Jesus. A relationship with the shepherd is not something to be achieved. It is something that is given to us as a gift. The shepherd leads as a gift. And I think knowing the voice of God and knowing the voice of the shepherd is, goes back to knowing his character. What are you filling your life with? Where are you getting the voice to speak to you in? Um, friends, the word of God is a huge gift, a huge gift. How are we to know what the, the shepherd is teaching us if we're not in his word? 
And I, I am the first to say it is one of the first things to go. And I think the times that I feel I need it the most are often the times in which I'm in the struggle the most. Um, I actually had a dream in preparing for chapel. I was telling um, Chaplain Tom this and my staff earlier is um, when I was preparing for this um, for this talk um, sermon, I don't know what you call it. Um, I actually had a dream that I was standing back here behind behind the screen and watching myself dressed in all black, standing at this podium, and then all of a sudden I dropped to my knees and I'm literally crawling on the stage. Um, and reaching out in despair, and I prayed to the Lord, please don't let that be me crawling on the stage. Um, I went and put it past me. I probably would do it, um, and it would just occur to me, and I just dropped to my knees out of nowhere, um, thinking through some ser- some objective learning thing because um, I'm hands on. And I think in that, I, I think in that, that picture um, was the reminder that the Lord was saying, like. I, I am here with you. I am here. I am leading you. And I was probably thinking about sheep and sheep being on all fours. And I, I don't actually really know why that came. But I think it links so much to that, to that trusting that the Lord is leading me and knowing his voice. I think knowing the voice of the, of the Lord, too, um, has been a question and a place of insecurity, actually, for me. Um, I grew up in a great Christian home. Um, love, love my parents dearly. They're actually in the audience right now. They flew up here from Kentucky. Yeah, Mom, wave your hands. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so thankful for them. And I think if there's, there's one thing that I could say about my mom and my dad is that the first thing she says for anything, anything, literally, is, "Did you pray about that?" Well, no, I just want to vent about it. I just, I need to get it off my chest. And she's like, well, did, did you pray about that? And I'm like, well, no. And she's like, well, how, how else are you going to know what the Lord is calling you to if you're not seeking his voice? Um, and so to know his voice is, I think, a big part of that, is to be in conversation so you can hear his voice. Um, I think the other thing that, that, thinks, that makes me think of is, is how much actions speak. Speaking, we often associate with with an audible response but so often we'll look at a piece of art and say what is that saying to you or you read a piece of literature what is that saying to you and i think it's because it's not just audible we don't just hear with our ears we hear with our eyes we see and it creates a response for us Um, and i think that that's that too links to that so reading the scripture getting into the word of god to know his voice listening engaging um, and really just letting yourself be in silence. Um, and I think that silence piece is probably the hardest for me. Um, I, also, I often fill my life with noise. Um, I'm constantly moving and doing. And um, actually, if I, if I had myself um, really together, I would actually step for you guys this morning because that's how I worship and I feel like I can hear the voice of the Lord when I step. And, um, and I think that that really links to... Um, to, to just trusting that the Lord is there. Um, it's been a place of insecurity for me um, because I never, although I grew up in a Christian home, I went to a public high school and went to a college um, and I'm working here. And, and I think when we toss around just this voice of God, listen to the voice of God, that we come to this place of, of resenting that God actually speaks to us. So know his voice. You have to be familiar with his voice and to be familiar with his character. I think too, to know his voice, is um, to not only to listen, um, it's, it's to obey. What is the Lord calling you to? What is he speaking to you right now? Um, it's a response. It's a, to hear, to listen to his voice is to respond. Um, and there's an, a following. The sheep don't just stand there, they follow. Um, and a lot of times we, we neglect that because we think we can do it on our own. We think that we have um, what we what we need just in front of us, and what, in fact, the Lord is calling us to something else. He's calling us to those still waters. What voices are you listening to and obeying, friends? I think um, we fight for control in our lives. Um, even in my life, I see this. Um, I was talking a little bit earlier about carrying the burdens of others to put them on my shoulders. Um, I have to often be reminded that I'm responsible to people. I'm not responsible for their own walks with the Lord. Each of you have to make your own decision for that. 
Um, but often we allow lies to speak truth into us. And we listen to the things in the mirror telling us that we're not enough and that we have to achieve in order, in order to be accepted. Um, maybe we, we fall on the other side. We fall so much so that we're setting so many boundaries that we place a wall around us and God. That we, we step so far back that we take responsibility for nothing and we, we, we don't create mess in our lives because we're too protected for that because we're afraid of pain and we're afraid of hurt. Um, maybe you fall on either side of those spectrums, um, but the Lord is calling us to obey, to fight that control in our life, to fight the need um, to follow our own instincts to follow those lies that keep seeping in, to follow the media, to follow um, this idea that we have to, to look and pers to pursue certain things. Um, what is the Lord really calling you to? Where do you need to obey that you're fighting? Maybe, maybe you haven't felt like you've heard the voice of the Lord. Have you created space for that? Are you creating daily, daily times in which you can sit in silence and listen to a small voice speaking to you? Or maybe you need space to, to just sit and be by yourself or within a group of people who know you and love you. I think um, this often leads me to two, to two questions as I think about um, knowing the shepherd, knowing his character and listening to his voice, is um, do you actually trust that the shepherd is leading you to good? Do you trust that the Lord is good? Do you trust that his power is healing? Do you trust that the shepherd is leading you to a place that restores your soul? If we don't believe that, how are you going to listen to his voice? How are you going to know? Do you trust that the shepherd has the power to lead you? Are you actively seeking that out? Can he rewrite your story? I think, um, I think in this, this present day, we, we can fight with this a lot. My favorite story in all of scripture is actually one in which Jesus is on his way to heal Jairus' daughter. And the woman who has been discharged with bleeding reaches out and touches the garment of Jesus, just the hem, and she's healed. But Jesus doesn't just stop with the healing and let power go on. He acknowledges her as his own. And he claims her um, as clean. He claims her um, as worthy of his attention, and he stops the crowd, pauses the crowd in order for her to be made restored to the community. Um, and he completely rewrote that woman's story. Now, we don't know the rest of the story, what happened to the woman, but in that moment, she was restored. Do you believe that Jesus can do that to you? Do you believe in his voice? Are you willing to obey? We think we have endless amounts of time in regard to um, the rest of our life. We think we're going to go on about our day, yet we are not promised tomorrow. So I ask you and encourage you as we um, prepare to leave this place, are you going to trust the shepherd is going to lead you to good? Are you going to be willing to listen to his voice to create space for that? In this season of busyness, um, of things colliding for our attention, um, I pray that you will reflect on the voice of the Lord. And if you don't know what that sounds like, to create space to just sit in the word of the Lord and in prayer and asking him to speak to you because his word does not return void. Let us pray. God Almighty, um, we, we open our hands to you, Lord. I pray um, that as we leave this place in this season of Advent, that you will prepare our hearts to listen to your voice. I pray that you will speak loud and clear to our community, that you will draw us together as one flock, um, following behind you as our good shepherd. You want good for us, God, and I pray that we trust that today. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You all are dismissed.